in this video I will explain the from my perspective best diet that you can have have as a psychedelic tripper because it enhances the clarity of your mental state so that you can experience the trip in a more clear way and it also calms down and cleans the digestive tract so that the trip will be more comfortable in your body. This diet can be a major positive switch in your life and especially if you are a psychonaut it will bring it will bring lots of comfort into your body and into your mind so that you can experience the trip just that much more clearer and comfortable. So first a disclaimer and then we'll start the video. I do not condone the use of any legal or illegal substances. This video is strictly made for education and harm reduction purposes only. Also, if you have a serious health issue, then make sure to consult a medical expert when you are going to make shifts into your diet. I'm going to tell you one sentence which I want you to remember for the rest of your life, which is don't take anyone's advice if we're talking about food. If you are talking to someone about food, then you will see that everybody has a different experience of what food is healthy and what is not. You can find so many articles about food on the internet. For example, why eating meat is bad for you, why eating meat is good for you, and all of those articles are even backed up with scientific sources, which makes it very tricky for the ordinary person to find out what foods are actually good for you because on the internet if you google up uh, information about food or you search on it on YouTube then everybody will contradict each other everybody will think that this food is good and this is not good for you so it might leave you very confused we see low carb diets we see sugar-free diets plant-based diets ketogenic diets and many many more and all of them claim that they have the best diet I lately saw a documentary on Netflix and it was about this monkey in a forest and this monkey knew that he had to travel to a specific pond in the forest to attain a certain nutrient, I think it was salt, from uh, this small pond. The monkey didn't think about it, he just knew that he needed this specific nutrient from this specific pond in a specific area of that forest. If I put a cucumber and a piece of meat next to each other, my dog knows which one to eat and which one to leave. And that goes for all animals. All animals know exactly what to eat and what not to eat. They are not able to think, oh man, this food, it has so many calories, maybe I should leave it and I should just eat this. But wait, that contains a lot of sugar, I should leave that and instead I should eat some fat. Animals are not able to do that, we just create this problem within ourselves because that is the power of the intellect that we got from nature and that we have as a human being. So why don't humans just simply know, just like an animal, what foods to eat and which foods to leave? You know exactly what you should eat and what you should not eat because your body will always give you subtle signals what foods to eat and which foods to leave. Your body will always tell you what it needs. But we are so distracted by our environment that we have lost contact with the subtle signals our body gives us. So instead of paying attention to what our body needs, we either stuff ourselves with junk food for pleasure or we search on the internet which foods are best for us. What an animal simply knows we now as humans have to conduct a billion dollar study in order to know what's good for us. Most of us are blind on what is good for us because our environment tells us this is good for you this is not good for you and we get confused because we trust our intellect too too much but that is our problem we trust the intellect too much and we don't listen to the signals that our body gives us anymore because your body as i previously said and i can't address it enough it will always tell you what to eat and what to leave so if people would be able to leave the intellect and all of the ideologies and stories that our environment tells us about food and we simply listen to this incredibly sophisticated and intelligent machine we wouldn't have any trouble with health and food. So after telling you that you shouldn't take anyone's ideologies and ideas about food and you should only simply listen to your body, why should you listen to me? Because I am also just a guy you can assume things from and believe me and that's 
exactly what I don't want you to do. I, in this video, I will give you my perspectives about food and I will give you a diet which helps the majority of the people and is and which is specifically really helpful if you are a psychonaut because it helps you experience the trip a lot clearer and more comfortable. Even after this video, don't take any of my ideologies and just experience uh, the, si the signals that your body gives about food. If you eat a cashew nut and you feel amazing and I eat a cashew nut and I vomit and um, I become sick, then why should I continue to eat cashew nuts? Like, this is a good example. Because um, I honestly, I really love cashew nuts. Uh, their flavor is just amazing. But if I eat them, I will crave sugar. I will become, um, I will get a brain fog. So I won't be able to use my cognitive functions as well as before eating the cashew nuts. I also get a real uh, tummy ache when I eat cashew nuts but if I google are cashew nuts healthy for you then uh, google says yes cashew nuts are amazing they have lots of nutrients you can eat them even um, as a meat substitute because it's so amazing and good for you but when I eat the cashew nut I don't feel good I uh, it only has negative effects on me so even though the internet and many other people say eat cashew nuts, they're good for you, my body says, no, nah, don't eat cashew nuts because this is not good for you. Take the signals your body gives you as the main source of information into understanding what foods to eat and which foods to leave and then you'll be good. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about my diet and it serves as a kind of guideline which you can follow to explore what diet works best for you but in this video i'm just going to give you the most basic principles about food and about my own diet so that you can start your own personal exploration of which foods to eat and which foods not to eat so the most fundamental thing which you need to know about your human mechanism that works for every person is that glucose is a fuel source which is not optimal. You gain it from eating carbohydrates and sugars. If you leave carbs and sugars out of your diet and you switch your main fuel source of glucose to ketones or to fat and protein, then that will be the most effective way, uh, that will be the most effective fuel which your body can operate on. I'm gonna explain that in depth a little bit further in the video, but first I'm gonna give you the two biggest problems problems that I ran into whilst I was stripping. Problem number one was that um, it is a general basic thing that you shouldn't eat for five to six hours before you go on a trip so that your uh, digestive system is at ease so that you can take the psychedelic and prevent nausea. But that is exactly the opposite of what happened to me. Because if I wouldn't eat for five to six hours, I would get hungry and then uh, I ate like mushrooms or LSD uh, whilst I was hungry, which caused me to get more nauseous. I never start my trip whilst feeling hungry because for me and I know a lot of more people who have that problem when they start and enter the trip hungry they will get nauseous and that's something that you don't want if you are entering an intense psychedelic experience. Problem number two arise because I thought okay if I enter the trip hungry I will get nauseous so then I just eat uh, a light salad or something like three hours before I go on to my trip but then as the trip would come up and i would get into the psychedelic experience i would feel the food digest itself in my intestines and in my stomach which would also not feel nice and then you can say doesn't it also happen normally that you feel the food digesting itself inside of your intestines and yes that's true but on the psychedelic you get more aware you get more conscious and you really feel the food just going down your intestines and digesting itself which is also not a very pleasant sensation it would really distract me from experience and from experiencing the trip and putting my focus on the psychedelic experience and also what would happen if i would eat just a couple of hours before i would uh, trip is that 
um, my belly would get all swollen up and it, it just didn't feel nice to eat a couple of hours before I would trip even though it was a salad with vegetables and some nuts. So here I was with a contradictional dilemma because on one side if I wouldn't eat for five to six hours I would get hungry and then as I consumed a psychedelic I would get nauseous. And on the other side if I would eat something light a couple of hours before the trip my belly would get swollen up and I would feel the food digesting itself inside of my intestines which would also not feel nice. You might have similar problems to me, you might have different problems to me, but there is one thing that is very important to know about digestion and psychedelic intake. Your digestion process is mostly influenced by serotonin in the 5-HT2A receptor in your brain. But most psychedelic substances like mushrooms and LSD bind to the 5-HT2A receptor. This causes a distortion in the function of your digestive system which can cause nausea, bloating, vomiting and other problems within your digestive tract. If you would eat an entire pizza and then consume LSD an hour after it, you will be in big trouble. But also if you eat certain foods which are considered healthy by a lot of people in general, this also might cause problems for you. The ideal situation for you to be in is to not eat for seven to eight hours or even more and then consume a psychedelic without ending up hungry. Because this would, this would mean that your digestive tract is completely empty and clean because you didn't eat for seven to eight hours or even for a longer period amount of time and you wouldn't be hungry so that you don't get nauseous whilst you enter the trip. This will likely prevent a lot of discomfort in your trip because your digestive tract is empty so that the psychedelic can't interfere with the digestive uh, movements that your body undergoes after you ate the certain foods. So what is this diet that I want to talk about in this video? It is the ketogenic diet, but with as less animal products as possible. The ketogenic diet is a diet in which you don't consume sugars and carbohydrates or as little carbohydrates as possible. The idea is to eat two times a day, no snacking in between meals, but you eat lots of fats, protein and vegetables. Quitting sugars and stop eating carbohydrate rich foods might have the most positive impact on your system that a diet can offer you. Sugars and carbs are converted in your body to the substance glucose. Glucose serves as a fuel that your body can run onto. The mistake that people make is that people actually think that you need to consume sugars and carbohydrates in order to, for your body to function, which is absolutely not true. Your body can function only on fats and protein because when fats and protein are converted into your body into ketones, then your body will have the most effective fuel source which it can possibly have. When your body runs on glucose, you will be constantly hungry and you won't be able to resist the urge of eating a lot of sugar, eating a lot of snacks and eating a lot of carbs. It is true that sugar and carbs keep you going because glucose is a fuel source but it won't keep you running for long. After a very short amount of time after eating sugars or carbs your body will be hungry again because glucose is simply not an effective fuel source for your body so it needs to eat more and more of it in order to provide the necessary energy that you need to go through your day. And most people have the common misconception that you need to eat three meals a day and also snack in between each meal as long as it's healthy so that you can keep your body going. But this is complete nonsense. Imagine yourself ten thousands of years ago. You're in a forest and food is scarce. Do you really think that you can find three meals a day and also find snacks in between each meal in the wilderness? Of course not. You will be lucky if you have one meal a day. In fact, these people from 10,000 of years ago, they would, they would go days without eating until they got a proper meal. Your body is designed to run on fats. Fats will keep you going for a very long period of time. It is much more effective than carbohydrates and sugars. It is a complicated story so pay close attention. Due to glucose lots of insulin comes in the bloodstream. 
insulin takes care of blood sugar levels but at the same time when insulin is in the blood it blocks the body from being able to burn fat this is why people gain so much weight not because they eat lots of fat but because they eat lots of sugar and carbs which causes the body not being able to burn fats anymore so even if you are consuming just a little bit of fat in your diet if you eat lots of carbs and sugars with it then your body won't even be able to burn that small amount of fat that you eat throughout the day so me so uh, diets which say to you that you shouldn't eat uh, you should eat as less fat as possible and just eat lots of carbs and sugar is bullshit because what happens is that even that small amount of fat that you um, consume throughout the day your body won't be able to burn it anymore because um, carbs and sugar create lots of insulin in the blood which will cause your body not being able to burn that fat anymore so even if you eat bread beans sweet potatoes fruits fruit juices rice all of these foods are considered healthy by a lot of people but they will cause a lot of trouble for you mental clarity may also decrease because as i said earlier glucose is not an effective fuel source for your body to run on so if so if your body runs primarily on glucose your brain doesn't get the necessary or the right fuel type in order for it to function which causes you to get brain fork or uh, to have your cognitive functions decrease so to summarize this story a little bit glucose is not an effective fuel source which your body can run on you gain glucose from eating lots of carbohydrates and sugars so if you would stop eating carbohydrates and if you would stop eating sugars then and eat lots of fat then your body will have um, a very effective fuel source together with protein and together with fats your body is able to function as well as it can possibly be and don't take this as an ideology as I said at the beginning of the video experiment with this because I might be lying to you I might not know what I'm talking about I might uh, have some misconceptions about this like if you just assume any everything that I say and just believe in it then it will only then uh, the beliefs that you have in your intellect they will crash into the urges that your body has into the subtle signals that your body gives you about what food what foods to eat and which ones to leave so this is fun you can experiment with this and see what works for you and what not it is just that i want to give you a general baseline which you can follow in order to find out which foods are good for you and which foods to leave so just take as a baseline glucose is not an effective way uh, for your body to function fats and protein are a good way for your body to run so experiment with that and um, see if what I'm telling you here is um, something that works for you I've experimented with this a lot I've talked to people who have also been on this specific diet and what I can tell you is if you would follow the upcoming diet that I will give you then you will simply just eat two times a day and you won't think about food for the rest of the day you eat a meal you feel satisfied then after six hours you eat dinner you feel satisfied again you won't have the urge to eat any food anymore you won't crave sugars you won't crave eating more than you should eat you will simply eat two meals a day and you're done you don't think about food anymore food has become such a cultural thing like you have cooking shows and everything but this you this is this is absolutely the wrong way to to think about food food should just be good it should be healthy so that this body operates as well as it can what happens in restaurants is the food and in supermarkets is the food gets modified so that it's delicious and you will uh, use it to enjoy it shouldn't be something it should also be something to enjoy but it shouldn't be the main thing about eating food is it shouldn't be 
only consumed because it tastes good. It should be consumed because it brings health to the system and it because it enhances your receptability and experience of life. That is the main go-to thing about food. This diet is perfect for psychedelic uses because it allows you to not eat for seven to eight hours or more than your digestive check track will be entirely clean it will be empty and then um, the psychedelic won't interfere with the digestive system because the digestive system is empty also switching your main fuel source uh, from glucose to fats and protein will likely enhance your receptability and your mental performance which is also a good thing if you are a psychonaut or if you take uh, psychedelic substances once in a while because it, it allows you to experience the trip with a more clear mind. So what to eat? In these two meals a day that you eat, you wanna make sure that it contains lots of veggies, you wanna make sure it contains lots of fats, and you wanna make sure it contains lots of protein. Don't eat carbohydrate rich foods and don't eat sugars at all, so also no fruits. Don't eat any type of sugar. You, um, yeah, it is true that you need carbohydrates in order for yourself to function, but even if you, uh, you don't need a lot of carbs. Like, vegetables also contain the necessary carbohydrates in order for your body to function. So you don't need to eat rice or um, lots of carbohydrate rich foods, because the foods that you will eat in this diet will have the necessary amount of carbs in order for your body to function. So just make sure you eat lots of vegetables because most vegetables could already contain the necessary amount of carbohydrates in order for your body to function. So don't worry about not getting enough carbs, just make sure that you eat lots of veggies. Meat, fish, dairy and other kinds of animal products should be avoided. Not necessarily because they're unhealthy, but because all of the nutrients that are attainable from animal products can be attained from plant-based sources. You want to eat only plant-based sources because compared to animal products, plant-based sources of foods are, are uh, less hard for your system to digest, which will result in your body being more at ease because your digestive system doesn't have to work as hard on um, plant-based products compared to animal products, which also allows your digestive system to be more at ease compared to eating animal foods. I said it in the beginning of this video, but if you are a diabetic or you have another kind of health issue, make sure that you consult a medical professional before you start experimenting with this diet. I'll show you my diet so that you have an example of what to eat. So this is the meal that I eat every day at like 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It consists out of an avocado, unsweetened dairy-free almond milk, pecan nuts, grinded turmeric, cinnamon and pure cacao butter, which is the main ingredient for making white chocolate. This meal doesn't contain any protein, so I eat protein for dinner, but this meal contains lots of fats sourced from cacao butter, pecan nuts and avocados to provide me with energy until dinner. But Marijn, if I eat an avocado, pecan nuts and a cacao butter, which is basically pure fat, won't I die of a heart attack? You must understand that cardiovascular diseases that uh, resulted as a consequence of having too much uh, cholesterol in your blood can only source from the fact that your body isn't able to burn that fat anymore. So what it does then is instead of storing all of the fat uh, for later use, it just starts getting into certain other aspects of your body like that fat and that cholesterol it might leak into your bloodstream which might result in a heart attack but if you only eat high amounts of fat meals two times a day without snacking in between and not eating carbohydrate rich foods and sugars then there is minimal chance for any danger when you consume high lots of fat, even when you consume pure fat every day in one of your meals. I can see with myself, I feel really good after eating this, my body doesn't show any discomfort and I'm not gaining any fat, which 
means that uh, my body is burning all of the fat that I intake. Otherwise, it would first store it into certain cells in my body so that I would gain weight. So yes, this is what I eat every day. I think it's very delicious and it keeps me going until dinner. It is also a plant-based meal. So these products are very easy for my body to digest. This reduces the stress imposed on my digestive tract, which is also very beneficial for taking psychedelics. The hard thing about this diet is that when you come off a carbohydrate and sugar rich uh, diet, then um, it will be hard to get off of that because sugars are highly, highly addictive. But if you are able to have uh, the amount of willpower needed to stop eating carbohydrate and sugar rich foods, then after three days of not eating these substances, you won't crave them anymore. So if you are able to switch your fuel source for three days straight from carbohydrates and sugars to protein and fats, then after three days you will have achieved this diet and you won't uh, crave the food anymore. You will just be able to eat two meals a day and not think about food anymore for the rest of the day. Your cognition might also improve drastically. Just pay attention to this to see if that is what is actually happening. Keep in mind that uh, the withdrawal symptoms of not eating sugars and carbohydrates anymore is that you will feel weak, you will feel tired and you will feel just drained. You will feel the exact opposite of what I will told you this diet will bring you. But those are just the withdrawal symptoms of quitting sugar and carbs. If you are able to maintain this diet, then after three days you will see that the withdrawal symptoms will just be gone. You will feel uh, mentally very good. You, uh, you will feel mentally very sharp. Your body will feel very comfortable. You will have energy. So just um, don't see it as a bad thing and don't see it as an unnormal thing if you have if you start feeling tired tired and uh, weak after quitting sugars and carbs that is what is supposed to happen you just need to push through it and then after a couple of days you will see that it will give you a lot of positive effects so for this first meal of the day which you will eat at approximately once you start to become hungry at 12 o'clock noon time make sure it only contains plant-based foods and that it contains lots of fat it's not necessarily the intention for this first meal to contain to contain lots of nutritional value the idea of this is that it has to contain lots of fat so that you have enough fuel just to keep you going until dinner. Dinner is when the real nutritional value comes. So this first meal of the day is just to keep you going. For dinner I eat a salad with a variety of diverse vegetables. I switch these vegetables depending on the season, most of the times then, depending on what's in the grocery store. Like um, for now for example I have cucumber, bell pepper, avocado, and uh, this is courgette, I don't know if that's also the, how it's called in English, but in Holland we say courgette. This time of the year I also eat a lot of cauliflower and broccoli. And uh, in autumn I, for example, eat pumpkin. Now for the protein and fat sources, I have uh, tofu, which is protein and fat rich. I have um, shiitake mushrooms, which is also protein rich. I bake my tofu and my shiitake mushrooms in uh, ghee butter. I think ghee butter is, if you haven't tried it, ghee butter is the most delicious butter ever made. It is literally pure fat, but as I said before, that's not uh, a concern if you don't consume lots of carbohydrates and no sugars. So this meal contains fat, it contains protein, it contains all of the nutrients that I need. I have there some uh, black pepper, which is also very good for you. And I use it to uh, spice up the taste a little bit. And now that I am not craving carbohydrates and sugars anymore, uh, I can decide to sometimes eat a little bit of carbohydrate rich foods, which you should only do that if you are fully onto this diet because otherwise you'll just fall back into craving sugars and lots of carbohydrates. So now, now I sometimes uh, switch the salad or the lettuce with some quinoa or a little bit of rice. And those contain uh, lots of carbohydrates, but if I just eat two times a day, no snacks in between, and I'm not addicted anymore to the sugar, then 
eating carbohydrates in your meals uh, from now and then it's okay it's fine just don't eat too much of it otherwise you'll just fall back into the old habit of eating lots of carbohydrates and being addicted to sugar now everything that i have over here contains all the nutrients that my body needs except for one of them Vitamin B12 is a necessary nutrient which we need in order for our bodies to function effectively. When I stopped eating meat and fish, I started to become very tired. Uh, my cognitive functions didn't work as uh, well as they used to and I just felt really weak. But then I found chlorella and chlorella is uh, a type of allergy which is the only plant-based um, food source which contains B12 um, as a natural nutrient. I didn't want to consume any human-made B12 supplements because they're human-made and I don't trust that. I just wanted to eat something natural and this chlorella, uh, it really worked good for me. So now I can just not eat fish, not eat meat and be well because I have a plant-based vitamin B12 food source. So I take five pills in the morning, five pills in the afternoon and five pills at night to provide myself with the necessary B12 that my body needs. Now in this society that we live in, maintaining a low carb and sugar-free diet is very hard because it's advocated everywhere, because it's normal to eat everywhere and it's more importantly one of the basic structures that a human be that most human beings have of being healthy that you need to eat sugars and carbs in order for yourself to function which again is not true you need very little amount of carbs and you don't need to consume any sugars at all in order for yourself to function but um for example, last I went out for dinner and then I came back, uh, I went to the toilet, I came back and my father told me, I ordered a cheesecake for you. And I was like, shit. Because what happens is, uh, once I eat the cheesecake again, I'll be back on sugar again. And then I will crave sugar the next day and the day after that. So, um, sugar is honestly, it's, it's like cocaine. It's might even worse than cocaine cocaine it might even be worse than uh, smoking because not only is it very addictive it is also advocated around this society everywhere and it's a basic belief that it's it is something that you need to eat in order to be healthy so getting off of it and completely uh, pushing it out of your life it's almost impossible but there are ways to make this a little bit easier for you. So that when you have a smuggle situation where you eat a delicious dessert or when you start eating a lot of fruits, then uh, there are a couple of ways in order to reduce the withdrawal symptoms of sugars and to reduce the urge to and to reduce the craving of sugars. What I do to keep myself from um, falling back into the habit of um, eating a lot of sugars is to drink hot chocolate and when i talk about hot chocolate i don't mean the hot chocolate that you can buy in the supermarket i mean high grade 100 percent pure cacao from peru uh, at, at least my cacao that i buy is from peru you can also buy it from indonesia or other parts of the world but what the uh, the cacao does is it contains lots of fat which allows you to keep going which uh, in terms uh, might decrease you craving sugars all of the time. Pure cacao also contains certain substances which trigger the making of serotonin in your system which will allow you to feel good and if you feel good you are less likely to uh, fall in the trap of admitting um, into your sugar craving. So yeah, pure high grade 100% pure cacao worked wonderfully for me. The Middle East is the place where the least amount of people are likely to get cancer. A Muslim undergoes the Ramadan, which means that during the day they don't eat and drink anything. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat, drink anything, but I'm saying that once you stop eating and you fast for a certain period amount of time each day this is very healthy for you you can see this with muslims because a muslim is less likely if they uh, undergo the ramadan and if they participate in it they are less likely to get uh, cancer because their body now can put the energy towards repairing the body and to 
instead of um, digesting food all of the time. It is very important that you leave a big gap amount of time between um, your dinner and the next day when you have uh, your first meal again. Because in this time, your body is able to um, put its energy into repairing the body. So I don't eat for like 18 hours after my dinner. I eat my dinner at six o'clock in the evening and then I eat my porridge, uh, my first meal of the day again, at 12 o'clock the next day. So this uh, creates a gap of fasting of 18 hours for me each day so that my body can put all of that energy instead of putting it into digestive food all of the time it can put all of that energy into repairing the body which in the end will result into a very fresh and comfortable feeling in your body it feels like you take an internal shower it is a challenge to get off the sugars and get off the carbs but if you are able to push through with this diet the benefits of it will definitely outweigh the challenge of quitting sugars and carbs. With this diet, psychedelic intake is less likely to cause discomfort in the digestive system and in the body in general. You can stop eating for seven hours or more before the trip without ending up hungry. With this diet, you will gain more mental clarity so that you can experience the trip with more clarity and focus. And if you find losing weight is a challenge, then this diet will also take care of that for you because it switches your main source of fuel from glucose to fats so that whatever your body is trying to do it doesn't have another choice but to burn fats in order to gain energy the only real challenge of this low carb and sugar-free diet is that you have to maintain that in a world like this where eating sugar is normal, where, eat, where eating lots of carbohydrates is normal. This video just serves as a general guideline uh, to basically understand uh, the needs of your own body so that you can create a diet for yourself which suits you the most. So explore this subject of food for yourself and stop assuming all sorts of things from internet. I hope that this video helps you out so that you can create more comfort whilst you are tripping on a psychedelic, but also that it improves and increases the amount of health and comfort that you experience in your life in general. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on your next trip.